But actually, a similar article just came out in the States from NPR. It says that Black millennials are completely behind when it comes to wealth compared to white millennials. White millennials are going to inherit $88,000, while Black millennials will inherit $5,000. Wow. Yes. And so the basically, reason, it, becomes, it mm -hmm. becomes impossible to close that gap. Yeah, and it's shocking because Black Americans our black people in the States have made huge strides politically, but the wealth gap is still there. White millennials are inheriting stocks and homes that their parents owned that have appreciated in value. Black men, millennials don't have that. And then when you throw in Africans whose parents just showed up the other day, the mm. gap is staggering, which is what we said last time, which is the gap is there and we're not closing it. I mean, systemic racism is definitely playing a big part. You know, if your family has been part of a system that has kept them from financially advancing, yes, you're going to feel it. There was a reason there was an entire civil rights movement in the States. Black home ownership, redlining, um, banks not loaning money to African-American families is a real thing. White mm. flight is a real thing. So in the States, white flight is when African-Americans or black Americans or black people would buy in a white neighborhood. White people would start moving or white people would get together to buy a home to keep black prospective families from purchasing in their neighborhood because their mm. argument was the value would go down. Or realtors mm. will purposely avoid showing black families homes in certain neighborhoods and only keep them in specific neighborhoods. So that's redlining. There's been a lot of lawsuits about that. Hmm. But yeah. again, capital is important when you don't have the capital or the money to give you the cushion that you need so that you can advance and pass things down to your children. That's a huge thing. Hmm. And student hmm. loans are a huge thing for us Africans and Black Americans. They're killing a majority of us. If you owe sixty to $100,000 plus interest in your 20s and then you want to go buy a house, what are you going to do? How are you going to be able to live? And let's say you owe sixty thousand dollars and you get a job that only pays you thirty thousand. You're in debt. How are you Forever. ever going to get out of this? Yeah. And then we have interest. So it's not that you owe sixty thousand. You owe sixty thousand plus interest. So depending on how you pay, you may wind up paying back eighty thousand dollars for a degree that costs sixty thousand to get. Wow but you still want to buy a house you want to have stocks you want to have savings but you're not going to be able to because you're going to be working just to eat let alone paying your loans you know over here we stay in perpetual debt you really have to be smart and strategic and have a plan which is what we said last time don't just do things to do things have a plan if you want to go to college be realistic about the degree that you want to get look at the cost can you really make that money back if if you want to go get a degree that's going to cost you sixty thousand, but when you get a job, mm. it's going to be thirty. Don't get that degree; it's a waste mm. of time and a waste of money. Not mm. to mention the advanced degrees that we get as Africans. How many of us get masters and PhDs just to say we have them and don't pay attention to the cost? Exactly. So that's even more debt. So you went and got this master's degree to go earn $40,000. My question is, could you have earned that same money without that degree? Goddamn right. <laughs> if you could, that means you wasted time, opportunity, and you went into debt. Now you have to try and make that money back. That's that 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 gap that's killing us, you know, or you get the ones who want to be the PhDs and you know, my thing is a PhD, if you have to pay for a PhD, you've already lost. You're not supposed to pay for a PhD. You're supposed to get a scholarship or the school pays for it. Anybody who paid for their PhD, I'm sorry, you lost. And over here, it's almost $100,000 for a piece of paper for someone to call you a doctor of something. So yeah, I wasn't shocked when I read the article about England, I was just like, oh, so then you guys are actually doing worse than us over here. <laughs> Not that oh, it's better, man. but it just, it just means, man, Black people, we got to have a plan. You know, it's not working. <laughs> we have to have a different plan. We have to be honest with ourselves about money. A lot of us don't understand money, and we're not comfortable with money either.
we don't know what to do with it. When we come here, we don't understand the system that is here. We assume that what works for the Americans will work for us, but it won't. If you are an Uber driver and you get an MBA, I could have saved you all that money and said, don't do it. Because to get mm -hmm. an MBA, you have to own a business, make a profit, and have a history of making profits in order for companies to take your MBA seriously. An MBA is just a piece of paper. There is no company that's going to tell you, here's $15 million because you have an MBA. No business owner who's made money is about to do that. They're going to check and see what is your history of earning profits for other businesses. That's what I want over here. Your MBA is just an extra little thing. It's a marquee. What matters is your history of earning money. The companies that you worked at, your network, who do you know? I don't really care about your MBA. If you have never made money, your MBA means nothing to me. And if you think these companies are too stupid and don't understand that you really don't know what you're doing and all you did was go to school and learn theory, they know it. And that's why they won't hire you. These people aren't stupid. They're in the business of making money, not running a charity. Just because you walk in with a PhD, all they'll do is look at your resume. What research mm -hmm. have you done? What groundbreaking, what groundbreaking research have you led? PhDs in the States are about bringing in income to universities. Unless that university believes your PhD is going to bring notoriety and money from donors, wealthy donors at the school who want to be associated with groundbreaking research and are going to donate buildings and labs, they don't want you. What's your PhD supposed to do to them? That means nothing to them. So you go out and get these MBAs and PhDs thinking that's what you need, but you don't understand the context behind it. You must generate profit. If there's no profit to be made, your paper means nothing to them. You're already in a system whereby it's rigged against you. So why do we think that, oh, we, if we have this mountain of MBAs and master's degree and all that stuff, tada, suddenly the glass ceiling will just disappear. Because it's what we've been told by our parents. Our parents told us as long as you get a degree, you can get any job. And maybe that's how things worked back at home. But that's not how it works here. There's too many people with degrees over here for your letters and your papers to matter. Think of how many universities there are over here. How many people go to school here? You're not that special because you went to college. If anything, you did the bare minimum that was required by getting that degree. It's not an example or a special thing. You just did what everybody else does. Absolutely. So how do you think black folks Let's talk about this, man. How can we begin to grow generational wealth? Because these, these gaps are staggering. 